a case of closed pyometra with an unexpected turn of events. A be kind to pets vet educational video. Veterinary medicine and surgery come alive to vet students and pet owners. Sponsored by the Pio Vets. Hello, vet. Oh, hello. Okay, um, I'm here because um, I'm really worried about a large swelling on the side of my dog. Um, is it putting on weight or is it something else? Uh, it's a slim, is it? Yeah. So your dog's name is Pepe, white or this, right? Yeah. Mm, okay. So actually, with regard to your question, there may be several causes. I'm not very sure now. So I need to ask you some questions first, okay? I need to check your dog's history. So is it, firstly, is it eating and drinking normally? Uh, it's not eating as much as last time and about the drinking part, I'm not really sure though. Oh, okay. Uh, how about his urine and stools? Are they normal? And when was it your dog's last hit? Uh, the stool is normal. Uh, not really sure when was the last hit. I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. Is there any vomiting? Vaginal discharge? Uh, there's no vomiting or vaginal discharge. Okay. Um, but however, the swelling has been there for already one week, so... Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, Based on your record, okay, she, your dog previously had three false, previous false pregnancy cases. The first one was in September 2005, August 2008, and the latest one was in this year, January 2013. Okay, I suspect a close fire match or an infection of your dog's uh, womb. Okay? okay. Yeah. But firstly, to make sure we need to take x ray and a blood test to be very sure of this. Because okay. uh, it's, just a hypo uh, it's just a hypothesis, right? Okay, okay sure. Okay, so before we do that, uh, let me do a physical examination and talk. Okay? okay, sure. Okay, then turn around, turn to the other side, facing the other side. Uh, then you take, take the other view also. Uh. Uh, this side is not swollen. Wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, yes, it's okay. This is not swollen. Uh. Mm, okay, so I actually physically examine your dog and I think the swelling is very big and it looks quite serious. So I think your dog really needs to go through a blood test and also an x-ray. Mm, what, what's the blood test and x-ray for? Blood test and x-ray is for to further confirm my uh, hypothesis of close by nature. Mm, okay, then I think we should proceed with the blood test. Lah. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Mrs. Slim. So your dog's blood test and x ray have come back now, and I think I need to go through it. Uh, go through both of them. Okay. Okay. Actually, your blood test and look good. Come. Okay, look. See? Your, Let me see. Okay. Your blood test. Hmm. Creatinine levels is actually. Lower than normal. Normal is uh, 89 to 177. Yours is very low. Whoa. 26 only. It means your dog's kidneys are not functioning normally. And this could be indicative of uh, other diseases. In fact, right. Anyway, uh, what is more worrying actually is the neutrophil levels in, in your blood, okay. dog's blood. Neutrophil is basically uh, white blood cells. So actually, your dog's neutrophil levels are very high, 84.9%. Normal is 60 to 70%. So it, it indicates that actually some infection within your dog. And okay, so let's look at your dog's x-ray. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, right, let me see. You see or not? Okay. Yeah. Really, you see your dog, the left side actually is, there's a swelling and this is actually the womb. So there's actually a huge swelling over there. Okay. See? Okay. okay. So, okay. So based on <sighs> The evidence available to me, so I make my diagnosis. Your dog actually has a close biometria. And so the only choice left for you and the dog is actually to conduct surgery. Um, but what are the chances of survival for the anesthesia? Well, actually your dog, as you know, is already very old. It's 15 years yeah. old. Yeah, it's very old already. And your dog previously had... Uh, long history of ailments based on your record and so it's quite successful the survival rate is maybe less than 50% 50, 50 oh. and the dog actually may just die on the operating table oh, oh I see yeah and furthermore as you can see is the 
they are create the low creatine yeah, levels. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just now. Not not very good kidney function. Okay. Um. Uh. So what do you think I should do? Based on my professional advice, you have no choice but to do surgery because if you do not do the surgery, your dog already has this condition. So if the wound, the infected wound, may just burst, and your dog will actually die a very painful death because all the toxic parts will actually leak out and kill your dog. Okay. So. Since I have to go with the surgery, um, how much does the surgery cost? Mm, about one thousand, about one thousand one hundred. Okay, but before you can proceed with the surgery, you actually have. To, I have to tell you something. As the owner, you okay. have to take actually full responsibility for the surgery and treatment of your dog. So you actually need to be aware of the risks and the procedures that are involved. Okay. Mm, okay. So yeah, the sign is actually a piece of paper. You say in, in uh, p uh. Showing informed consent of the surgery. So okay, sign okay. here. Just sign here. Let me see. Um, Are the details correct? Mm, yes. Okay, okay, sign here, right? Yeah, okay. actually, any box or something. Okay, thank you. The IV drip is given to the dog before the surgery to maintain the blood pressure of the dog during the surgery in case excess bleeding occurs. Now, we will go through the various equipment used in the procedure of giving the IV drip. First of all, we have the IV drip tubing set. Secondly, it is the 24GA catheter. Here, we have all the various types of intravenous fluids available. The one we used is the one that is shown in the video right now. This is the elastic adhesive bandage. This is the scissors that we used to cut the bandage. And finally, it is the vet wrap bandaging tape. Right now, the vet is inserting a cephalic catheter into the vein. The slight flashback of blood into the catheter indicates that the needle is into the vein. Now, it is the securing of the catheter using an elastic adhesive bandage. The bandage is rolled once around the leg and another around the leg, but this time over the catheter. The stopper is then taken out and the IV tube, which is already connected to the intravenous fluid, is inserted into the catheter. Another round of bandage is applied with the elastic adhesive bandage first wrapped around below the catheter, crossing over at the top and then finally around the leg. Blue 3M vet trap bandaging tape is then used. For the final securing, the vet wrap is wrapped around the leg and catheter for two rounds. And on the third round, a segment of the IV tube is wrapped around the leg to prevent the catheter from coming out when the tube is tucked lightly. The vet wrap is then wrapped around for two more rounds, making a total of five rounds. The time, see the time.
one forty two that he has given. Okay. No in the on drugs. Okay, the why do they take all this yeah? Hi Vet, so how is PP doing now after the surgery? Oh, she actually performing quite well. Hi. The surgery went quite well and we managed to remove the swollen and uh, infected wound. The infected uterus was extremely big and swollen and weighed 672 grams. The dog only weighed 4.35 kilograms. We were actually quite lucky, you know. The dog was very old, it was already 15 years old. It could have died from many complications due to the surgery or the anesthesia due to the old age. So it seems that you take very good care of your dog and can live so long. Oh, I see. Um, so how is it now? Is the condition stable after the surgery? Oh, it, it actually been 24 hours since Pepe's surgery and yeah, she, so she seems to be fine. She has a very healthy appetite. She's been eating and drinking quite well. I look at food bowl. She, you actually have a second serving so far. Yeah, so also we noticed that she does not seem to be vomiting at all. This is a good sign. As it uh, indicates that she is not suffering from any serious kidney failure or toxemia, which is indicated by vomiting. So no vomiting is a very good sign. Huh? Good work. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, what should be done now? Oh, actually, we advise that you allow her to be kept here for three days minimum in confinement. Okay. After that, you can take her home and keep her confined within a cage for at least two weeks or three <coughs> weeks. This will prevent her from jumping about and allowing her stitches on her belly to unravel, which we do not want to happen. Okay. Uh, I see. Um, but I don't actually have a cage to confine her. Can I just keep her here for seven days instead? At least I will feel reassured that she is in safe hands. Hello, uh, okay, fine, fine. Go ahead and go to the counter and give you the message. In this diagram, you can clearly see the huge layer of a mental fat adhered to the left uterine horn. This confirms the diagnosis that this is a case of the torsion of the uterus because in the case of a normal closed pyometra, as shown in the picture now, there is no omental fat present on the uterus. As shown in the video, as we carefully cut open the infected womb, a fluid consisting mainly of blood and pus squirts out. As can be inferred from the red colour of the fluid, we can conclusively propound that the dog was in its early stages of closed pyometra as later stages of closed pyometra has a more whitish coloured fluid contained in the infected womb. Oh, hello vet. Hello, Mrs. Lee. Um, I'm here to thank you because if not for you, my dog wouldn't be healthy and happy right now. Okay, fine, sure, don't mention it. So. Actually, in retrospect, I was reviewing your case and to be honest, you could have avoided all this unnecessary emotional distress and danger and risk to your pet if you actually had listened to my prior advice to spay when it was at a younger age. Uh, you could have avoided it uh, developing uh, close by a if you could have spayed it and as such, avoided actually all the uh, uh, high amount of risk implicated during its surgery and anesthesia. So, oh, yeah. oh, I see, but um, actually, right, the dog is not mine, it's actually my daughter's. But the dog was given to me for me to look after after my daughter got married. Oh. Hence, I, I, w I couldn't really make the decision to spay her. But with that aside, I think what really matters now is that my dog 
is happy, healthy, and recovering from the surgery. Oh, alright, so my sister has just bathed and cleaned your dog, so we're handing over. But first, we do some check, okay? Okay. Okay, so this is actually your dog, Pepe. She looks quite fine and healthy. And this is actually her stitch, the seven day old stitch oh, from the I surgery. See. You see, right? Yeah, I see. Mm. So, mm. She, the stitch is already is holding well, it's not uh, unraveled, and ah. it seems to be quite uh, sturdy. Okay, so it won't come off, I mm. said. Mm, okay. And so your dog actually has a very good appetite. It's been eating well and also has not been vomiting. So she essentially she's quite stable. Uh, oh. urine and stools are quite normal. Okay. And she's also very alert and uh, quite alert, very active. You see? Hi. Hello. Hello Pipi. Hello. Pipi. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so anything else you want? Um before we hand it over to you. Uh not really. Uh. Uh, I would like to thank you again though, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah. sure you're as eager as uh, eager to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we sure. touched so long for this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you, bye. Bye.